I love all kinds of quirky Quaker phrases such as, you know, a nudge or a leading or um, uh, way opens, um, a covered meeting. I love the traditional use of the, I love the metaphors of the seed and the light and um, those ways of approaching divinity that don't necessarily evoke a, a male, you know, deity in the sky waiting to judge you when you die, um, because that conception of divinity is not life-giving to most people. So I love all of those things. My favorite Quaker phrase is, there's that of God in everyone. In the church I grew up in, there was a definite line of saved and unsaved, and who was out and who was in. I think it is one of Quakerism's most radical beliefs that there is God in every single person. At the core of us, it is not a depraved sinner, but it is a beautiful light and that everyone has that divine spark that needs to be honored and respected. One Quaker term that I am finding joyful in my life right now is saying, you know, that friend speaks my mind or that friend has spoken my mind. In part because it reminds me a little of a game that I play with children when I teach them a thing. It's like an icebreaker game where you're in a circle and one person stands in the center of the circle and they say a thing that they like or that they do. And then anyone else who also feels that way gets out into the center of the circle and has to swap places and finding the areas where in which we can tether ourselves to each other. So when I hear that, as we're doing business, um, or I get to use that, I think it helps us as a community get a sense. We talk about that like sense of the meeting or the thing that, you know, in business, a, a clerk or the clerk's table should be sort of listening for, like, where is the body that we can um, tether ourselves or knit ourselves to each other? Like, oh yeah, that's me too. Or, you know, that is what spirit is calling me to too. My favorite Quaker phrase is let your life speak. There are many things that we can say, yes, we are this, or yes, this is who Quakers are, this is who I am as a person, but until we live into that, it's only words. For me personally, one of the pieces that comes to mind in particular around this is the willingness to put my photo project out in the world. I am trans and queer and gender fluid, and the project relates to some of those topics. I know that there are people who have been physically attacked or yelled at or sent death threats. And so even though there is that fear, sometimes I know that God is by my side and, and divine is there, you know, supporting me through whatever happens. And so the willingness to live into those hard places, because that is where God is calling me and to let not just my words, but let my life speak in the willingness to go there is, is something that is truly spiritual to me. I think one of the Quaker terms that I hold dear, that is, imperiled is actually the term of oversight that there was a oversight committees there still are ministry and oversight committees that there were overseers in quaker meetings and the reason i treasure that is because i believe that the spiritual life of a person the spiritual growth of a person sometimes needs guidance pruning, 
correction. I mean, it's all about people who know better giving you tools and correctives and invitations that enable you to be better. And so I don't want us to lose oversight and the function of oversight. I am now resigned that we will lose the word uh, because of its association with slavery. It's very off-putting. Um, but I hope we do not lose the ethos of oversight and that we continue to maintain and to name those elders who have the gift of providing skillful and loving oversight. So for me, a word within Quakerism that has become very important to me is the spiritual concept of visitation that actually comes from Robert Barclay's apology. And for Bar Robert Barclay, visitation is that experience of feeling Jesus come in and making a decision, am I going to be a follower, a disciple, or not? However, this experience of visitation, we don't even have to know who Jesus is to be able to experience that. We don't even have to call it Jesus. We can call it God, the divine. It's really about opening ourselves up to that presence fully and being willing to take that weight and responsibility that comes with being a disciple or comes with Quaker values and diving in and just trusting that Jesus is walking alongside us and Jesus is also within us. Thanks for watching this Quaker Speak video. We release a new video every other Thursday. You can watch all our videos in this playlist here. You can subscribe to our channel by clicking this button here. You can support us through our Patreon here. Thanks again for watching and have a happy Thursday.